All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Up and In Show. We are not at Cards and Culture like we usually are, but we are on the purple couch. Um, and it's been a wild morning already. We're a couple minutes late on our podcast, but I have a really special, fun guest today. I'm fired up. Ryan Cox, the shortstop for the Savannah Bananas. Thank you, bro, for being here. Thanks for having me. How you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I hit some traffic on the way here. I think I hit every red light that I could have hit. There was construction on the roads, but um, we're here. Abby's rolling. She's feeling good. Uh, and Lila decided yeah, to sit by you today. Yeah, we're friends already. Like yeah, this. I think I was showing her some videos last night of the ball tricks that you were doing, and she's thinking that you're going to pull out a ball or something and play with Dude, her. We can play some fetch. <laughs> for sure. uh, but seriously, man, I appreciate you making the time because, you know, we talked really brief um, for a few minutes before we flipped on these cameras, but you guys are in the middle of a, a road trip. You said 10 days in a row right now? Yeah, so we got these last two games here in LSU, and then we'll travel back home on Sunday, uh, go to Gwinnett, Georgia after that, and... I think sometime in April we got a little long road trip, but we're a quarter of the way down to impacting a million fans this year. I think we got 800,000 more fans to go, so the tour is just beginning. Holy shit, I love it, man. Uh, and, and especially thank you because it was a quick turnaround. You said you were doing some laundry in the hotel. I know that lifestyle, living yep. out of a suitcase for a while and trying to make it work. Um, so I appreciate the clean laundry and everything. That's, oh, too. that's I nice. I had to come fresh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm not going to come here with yeah. dirty laundry and, you know, not not kept. So no, I had to get the laundry I, done. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, all right. So before we dive into what you thought of LSU and Alex Box and everything, I want to talk about you, your story really quick, um, your background. Where are you from originally? I'm from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, which is right outside of the Pittsburgh area. Okay, nice. Um, I went to St. Bonaventure my first year of college, Kutztown University for my sports management degree and the rest of my baseball career. Played some mini ball for three years, uh, Washington Wild Things in the Frontier League, and then got into coaching and content full time. And that's kind of how I got to the bananas. I love it. I love it. I'm a Northeast guy too. I grew up in Jersey. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm 34 now. And I've, this is my 17th year down here at, in Louisiana. So I'm almost like full Southern, I guess, now. But I love um, the South. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, yeah. I, shit, I guess I do too. I've been I, here 17 I, years. Yeah, you can't beat the winners. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's well, that's a li originally what made me come down to LSU, and obviously LSU is what it is and stuff. Um, but I just was like, dude, I'm sick of this cold. I want to go outside. I want to play all year round, everything. So. Playing 20 high school games a year is kind of tough. Brutal. I'm like yeah. these Louisiana kids. Like when I committed to LSU, they had like 25 games under their belt when we were playing game one. It was crazy. Right. I'm trying to compete. And you yeah. Got a leg up. Like. Yeah. Exactly. Um, all right. So we said, uh, you know. You said that you were coaching. Where were you coaching? Uh, so a buddy that I played indie ball with started Fennel Brothers Baseball right outside of Pittsburgh. Okay. So I was doing private lessons, coaching uh, two teams for him, and then helping with the other teams he had in the organization. Nice. And then making baseball content. It started as instructional stuff. <laughs> And as a shortstop, I started doing some what is now like trick plays. I didn't yeah, consider yeah. them trick plays, but when you would see Javi Baez or Hanley Ramirez or somebody make like a flashy play that wasn't normal, that to me was like, I want to do that. So I was practicing all that kind of stuff, and I started putting them online. I had played for Jesse in the Coastal Plains League in Summer Bowl. Okay. So right after that, he had saw the video. I had the shirt on that I played for the team, Gastonia Grizzlies. Yep. So he reached out, and this was – November and he said, "Hey, we got to try this out." This past November or no? This was no, it's had to been twenty fall of twenty one. So okay. trial was spring of twenty two. Okay, cool. And he was like, "Hey, come down to tryouts." So I went down to tryouts. There's a hundred people there. Holy shit! And at this point in my in my head, I'm a coach, right? Yeah. I'm not I'm not a baseball player anymore. Right, right, I'm a retired. Right. I'm a, I'm a coach. And all seeing all these guys was a little intimidating. <laughs> I didn't have a fantastic tryout. I had a good one. It was it was fine. It wasn't you know, anything outstanding, wasn't a backflip, wasn't anything crazy, Yeah. but I made the team and that was pretty surreal, surreal. And it took me some time to just get back into that mindset of, okay, you can't play Yeah. because when indie ball tells, you no, when the, when the big leagues tell, you no, when, you know, big colleges you want to go to tell, you no, it's hard yeah. to wrap your mind of like, Hey, I'm supposed to be in the stage. I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be in this light. And, uh, the bananas has helped that confidence kind of grow on field. I love it. I love it. Um, so when you say like, Trick, there's a couple of things I want to dive into, but mm -hmm. when you say trick plays now or what you were doing content wise, like what kind of stuff? Like, I know I've seen stuff now on what if, what it's evolved <laughs> to and between the legs and mm -hmm. the behind the backs and all that shit. But what was the stuff that you were making at that time? So early it was like I would start with quick transfers. Gotcha. And then I would get the ground ball and to turn two, I would bring it between my legs and throw it. I would kick a ball up off my nice. foot. Um, you know, the behind the back pass to second base on a double play yeah. things like every once in a while, you'll see that the behind the back pass right. to second, but very rarely, you don't see guys kicking balls up to themselves no. <laughs> yeah. or you know, do anything like that. So the trick play has definitely evolved 
but it was those things that you would see. Oh, that's flashy. Right. When they would say flashing mm. the leather. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. I always thought flashing the leather. Like, that's yeah. me. Like, yep, that's the guy it. who flashes the leather. Yeah. And flashy, like you said, he's a flashy player. Like, and you were saying Javi Baez, things like that. Like mm. those are the guys that you think of when you think of that. So um, I love that. And when the, tr when you say tryouts, is it, so it's like, and pardon my ignorance, but like it's full on baseball. Like you're playing games and shit, like pitchers are pitching, right? Mm -hmm. And things like that. So they want to see your actual baseball skill, right? Right. So tryouts was a combination of how can you entertain, but I mean, frankly, you have to play good baseball. Yeah, exactly. You None of this works player. if you don't play good ball. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you're going out there and, you know, guys are throwing under 80 and not right. hitting home runs and right. making a lot of errors, nobody's going to want to watch exactly. that. Exactly. So we got guys, you know, throwing legit in the mid 90s. We yep. have guys who can really field it, really hit it. And uh, we're trying to win. You share a locker room with somebody, so you you want to compete, yeah, especially absolutely. in a tryout situation. Like that's very competitive. Yeah. So we went out. It was a long day. It was nine o'clock to you know four thirty five o'clock where we went through full day. We had our entertainment meetings. We went through. Some people did some TikTok content stuff. We had you know Jesse breaking down the, the purpose and you know the mission behind all of this. And then in the afternoon we played a full game and put that banana ball to the test. And I love it. The very first tour I was on, we did, I think it was like, <clears throat> might have been like eight weeks. Okay. Um, shorter stint, just to, you know, it's yeah. growing. This is 2022, right? Correct. You're saying, yeah. And so then they had the summer ball, they were still doing the college stuff. Yeah. So we took a uh, break for the professional stuff. College kids came back. They won a championship in the summer. Really? Doing crazy banana antics, but yeah. playing real baseball, won a championship. We come back in the fall for the ESPN documentary. So they build six games around this ESPN documentary. Okay. Um, super awesome to see Banana Land on ESPN. Yeah. We go play one game on ESPN2, a couple games on ESPN+. Plus. Really have a great time. And then we do the, the big tour uh, last year. And 2023, right? Yeah. 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 Seeing those stadiums, seeing those wait lists, the competitiveness of the games. We were up at one point, eight or nine games. Party and we'll start winning. Party and we'll start winning. <laughs> we get all the way to Cooperstown, the last last game. Yeah. Bananas get inducted into the Hall of Fame. Super, super emotional. Like, like I can't believe that I'm a part of this. And, yeah. you know, we're here and doing all this stuff. We have 33 wins. Party and we'll have 33 wins. Holy shit. So this whole tour that everyone's like, oh, yeah. is it the Globetrotters and the Generals? Right. It's like, no. no. We're playing real baseball. Right. Yeah. So and we want to win. We're right. We're on, double, <laughs> yeah. we're on double day field. And yeah. it's, okay, not to... The newest surface, right? Not yeah. the newest dimensions. Wow. Double and day is old as shit. And we're it's playing awesome. for the championship, yeah. right? So it ended up being a great game. Party animals ended up coming out and winning. So the whole off season, it's like, okay, we're well, coming back in 2024. Like the bananas want to win this tour. Yeah, we yeah. want to go out there and win. So playing that competitive level of baseball, but also putting on the level of show, it's it's been so fun to watch it adapt in the three years. It's pretty crazy. That's cool. And you guys just play each other, right? Or is there other um, <laughs> some other teams that mix in? Or? Last year we played some challenger okay. series where okay. we would play some indie ball teams. And then this year we have our third team coming into the league, the Firefighters. Right, right, right. They're going to play us for some games, the Party Animals for some games. And the goal is to build this out for a league. Nice. So that, you know, eventually we have six teams, eight teams where oh, that's awesome. regionally you can be a fan of this team in Banana Ball. Right. So, yes, you might be a fan of the Savannah Bananas as a whole, but your team may be whatever, you know, one of those future teams is. And <clears throat> you get to root for them. So now all of a sudden you have a Banana Ball type show. And fans have more of an opportunity to see that type of show yeah. with high-level baseball. That's really cool. I love that. Um, and so, if I'm doing my math right, 60, 70-ish games would have been the tour last year, right? Like if you were, th if it was 33. Yeah. You guys had 33 wins. They had 33 wins. Right. And, and then, then there were some other games in there. Correct. 60 so to the bananas played a couple exhibition games. Yeah. The party animals hosted their first um, like it's exhibition a lot of games. game. Right. But it's it's great for me as a ball player because yeah. I, I want to go out there and play. Yeah. I want to have some consistency to it. It was kind of hard the first couple of years getting a taste of what this could be like. It's like, oh, we're only going to play 25 games right, in the spring. Right. So, yeah. I got to wait till the fall. Yeah. And, um, you know, sitting there and waiting, waiting around for banana ball in the fall. Not that it was a long time, but I was like, I don't want to go play any, yeah. anywhere else. Oh, I love it. What That's am I going to go do? Go yeah. play any ball again? No, like, no not, I, not when you've had this taste. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm going I'm to stick around and see what we can make out of this. And they're giving me the opportunity to play shortstop where – I feel like a lot of my career was if you get a base hit, you're going to stay in the lineup. If you don't get a base hit, you're out of the lineup. Right. Here, they like me for not just my defense, but who I am as a, as a person and what I can do on the baseball field, my yep. character yep. and what, what that brings to the organization. Yeah. So, yeah, I might not always be successful at the plate, 
but just because we're consistently online and we're consistently, you know, engaging with the fans, like mm-hmm. that builds so much credibility to what you're doing for the organization. Absolutely. Um, you've mentioned Jesse a few times, so want to give his background and who he is and what he's kind of done to build this and, and that kind of stuff? Yeah. So um, as far as the bananas, Jesse talks about starting the bananas and I don't, he can tell his story <clears throat> very well and yeah. he tells it very well but him and emily went full investment into the bananas to the point where they were living on air mattresses like trying to figure out how the how the bills were gonna I've work i've heard some and stories yeah it was unbelievable i mean the fans didn't respond necessarily well to the name bananas in the beginning yeah. you know they were trying to figure out how they were going to sell tickets how they're going to make ends meet and time and time again him and emily have just found a way to get it done they hire great people with jared as our president and all the people underneath who can make these shows happen and get these fans in the ballpark and take care of their needs, whether they traveled far, or they have somebody with disabilities, like making sure that everybody has the best time at this show. That's awesome. And that started a long time ago, long yeah. before I got here. Yeah. So seeing it now translate to fans staying for the long term, adding new fans, going to these new cities and be able to make that impact on people. It's pretty, spe- pretty special when you go to other places and you're seeing like, wow, we would do this and this business you know may have done that so yeah. that fans first approach in you know eight years ago now being able to take that to forty one thousand last week <laughs> in an mlb ballpark it's crazy and having people come up and just being so excited yeah like, imagine 41 people forty one thousand people and you're still able to get out there and sign autographs you're still able to engage in the top deck you're yeah. where we walked off that game like somehow some way oh it God. was it was a crazy game yeah. roger clemens pitched and roy oswald pitched i heard yeah that's so awesome still just to give the fans that show in one night was was pretty special yeah well talk to me how how you guys pick your celebrities your people i saw john cena came out like yeah. dude how does that all work is obviously it's regional and like where they pl- you know where you guys are playing and stuff right. like that but how does that come about it's a surprise um sometimes we know Especially, oh, really? So sometimes you guys, you don't even know. No, the John Cena thing, we had a meeting on our, like, in our, we got a group meeting, right? So, like, yeah, yeah. in our group meeting, meeting in the locker room, 9 a.m. And this is a day game. So we just played two. We just lost two games. Oh my God, yeah. And we're like, why do we have, why do we have a meeting at yeah, 9 a.m.? Yeah. Like, let's get into rehearsals. Let's get, get this day going. Yeah. So we're sitting in there. Okay, who could this be? Who could this be? So we're in Tampa. <laughs> we're in the Yankees facility. So you're yeah. just starting to name off people. Yeah. Is it Baker Mayfield? Is it Aaron Judge? Yeah, you know? yeah. And John has seen it comes through, and that's there's great crazy. pictures of the locker room just reacting. Like, oh my goodness, Dude, I couldn't so believe crazy. it. Yeah. We had we had guys like crying. Some of these, that's they're they're hero, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly, hero. Yeah. And you watch any of the wrestling but, stuff yeah. growing up, or He's you so, see what John Cena's man. done, and he bought into what we were doing. He loves what we were doing. He actually, when he went up to the plate, he was holding my bat, no. so he didn't swing or, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. he had my bat. I got to take a picture with him. I have a picture with I John saw Cena, the picture on your and it says Ryan Cox on the barrel. <laughs> That's so badass, yeah, dude. That is cool. incredible. You guys are making memories for a lifetime, seriously, and just doing things that people dream about. So I think that's so awesome, man. And you guys are inspiring um, a lot of people. And as a person, you know, I played baseball. I was fortunate enough to play professionally, major league, all that stuff. It's It was so stiff when I was playing. I, I played with some great organizations, right? The Red Sox, the Rangers, the White Sox. And not until I got to the White Sox was it like kind of chill. It was just like everything was so stiff. It was like, you know, the way that it has to be done. So I think you guys are breaking so many barriers. And you see the game at the top level changing. And I'm not even kidding. Like, I really think it has a lot to do with what you guys are doing and how fans mm-hmm. embrace you guys, you know? It, it's, it's very cool to see because I grew up in very similar baseball environments where – walk the line right yeah like exactly you, you want to get recruited by this guy yep. my dad would always say you never know who's in the stands yeah which is very true right you gotta act upon your morals act and mm-hmm. be a good person but you can have that flair you can have that style and the mlb has done a great job with that too you see uh, when you talk to kids who's your favorite player tatis acuna right. it's yeah, all the people. So yeah. everybody's got chains they got swag yep. that's what the kids want to do they want yep. to express themselves we were talking earlier about Everyone just wants to kind of put the splash on the painting. Yeah. Right. You want to have your opportunity to kind of put your mark on the canvas before you're done with it. Yeah. As a baseball player, you don't know whether your baseball career will end at 18, 22, 40. You you never know when that's going to be. So how are you going to tell me how I should play it? I I agree. Right. Teach me, coach me. I want to get better. I want to be the best I can for this organization. Yeah. But because I have a little bit more fun celebrating and, Unfortunately, I haven't hit a home run yet, but I will soon. <laughs> uh, but when I do, and like the guy bat flips it, right? Yeah, like, why is the umpire pushing the guy out of the box? No. Did you hit that home run umpire? No. Like, let us have some fun with it. Let the kids enjoy it. Like, 
they're not trying to take anything away from their opponent. They're just trying to celebrate in all the hard work right. and what they've put into the game. It's hard to hit a fucking baseball. Yeah, it's so you know hard. Saying? Like, as I'm a pitcher and I want to see bat flips. I'm like, <laughs> and you know why? Because I want to jaw at you the next time I strike your ass out right. too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you that's part get it of back. it. Like, that's the fun part of the game. And that's what makes it fun. And that's the thing. When I was at LSU, we were hella, com- like, we would talk shit. We were, I mean, mm-hmm. it was our thing. Like, to the point we'd be at the end of the dugout because our coach didn't want us, you know, like, and we'd be all jawing at the players and stuff. And, like, when I got to pro ball, that's what made it so boring for me. It was like, I tell this story to people at the shop all the time. I remember I got drafted with, um, you know, a couple guys in our class. And one, the third round pick was um, a high school kid. And we called him the kid. He was a lot shorter than us, you know, and a couple of the pitchers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we all climbed up together. Low A ball, he hits his first home run. And he hits the home run. He's running around the bases. And me and my boy, Brandon Workman, he's from Texas, you know, big college school. We're on the top dug, and we're like, let's fucking go, kid. Like, by the time he got to second base, our manager was on third base. He comes over and beelines over to us. And he's like, sit the fuck down. And we were like, what the fuck? Like, we thought he was, like, joking, you know? Mm-hmm. We're like, all right, Billy, whatever. And then he's like, I'm not kidding. Sit your asses down. I'm going to talk to you in between, the du- in, in between innings. He goes and gives the kid his dap, right? And we come in, we pat him on his ass. And he's like, dude. This is professional fucking baseball. We don't do that college rah rah bullshit. And I was like, ugh. I was just like so disgusted. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That was like my first real taste of like, oh, this is gonna be a lot different than what I know. You know, and that's what made college baseball fun. It's what made baseball fun for me. You it's know? the com- it's the camaraderie. Yeah, you, you put the hours in the weight room. You sacrifice other things, whether it's you know going out that one weekend or not being able to see your family on for you know us baseball players. Maybe it's Easter, for example. Right. You sacrifice so much. Why can't I celebrate that one moment? You should. It's 20 seconds. <laughs> exactly. I, we, we have two hour time limit on our games. Wow. So we yeah. have everything timed out. Yeah. Like I, I know probably how fast it takes me to walk up to the plate. I'm usually five to six seconds probably. Yeah. That's unless great. I have a grand entrance. Yeah. But like everything in the head. What is an extra five seconds right. in that it point? Matter. And it wasn't even taking any time away. We were like, just trying to celebrate the kid's home run. It was a memory for him. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. the rest of his life. And we jaw back and forth, especially seeing those guys every game. They have great ball players. Their center fielder last night hit a home run. We were, we were up, hits a home run in the ninth inning. And then we go to showdown. So our showdown is one pitcher, one hitter, one fielder. Oh, my God. Right? So you go ninth yeah. inning. I love that. Right? He is up. He's their, their batter. Yeah. Hits a ball to the wall, scores, ends up winning the game. Like, he went off. Wow. You better believe, like, he's running around second base on that home Same, run of the ninth yeah. inning telling like, me about it. Yeah. Because I would tell him about it vice versa. 100%. I pick somebody off. I do this stuff. Like, yeah. You, it's not that I'm, like, talking to you. I'm just talking about the game. Yeah. You're in that position. Part of the game. Yeah. yeah. Like, look Absolutely. at look at Tommy Tanks behind you. We got to go watch LSU. Like, that's, that's what it's about right That's there. what it's about. Literally what it's about. No, 100%. Um, another thing that you just brought up, your guys' rules. This it's mm-hmm. it's banana ball. What are the so what are the major obviously you just said one in the ninth, right? Um the time limit. You guys are on a doesn't the time go the whole time, right? Like, yeah, so it, at <clears> seven <throat> o'clock they'll come on fans. We need everybody to start the clock. Three, two, <laughs> so from the first pitch, clock rules. Um, very few times have I seen the clock stop. It, some injury, injury, for yeah, example, something or crazy, something yeah, like something that. Crazy, but. Yeah. Clock rolls all the way through. Ninth inning must start before the two-hour mark. Oh, wow. So I, I think one one game we didn't get nine in, and that might have just been a rain delay this year. We've been yeah. really good about it. That's but awesome. We played a game in, I think, an hour 35 God, that's fun. <laughs> Sick, right? Yeah, that's the way it should be. Yeah, yes. You, you know when you're going home. <laughs> exactly. That's Well, that's the thing. I, I joke all the time. Like, when I have kids, I'm like, I don't want to do the baseball right. thing. Six hours at the field. Like, no, I like a basketball game. You know exactly how much it's going to mm-hmm. be. Like, you know you're in and out. Like, there's not really too much variation. It also presses. It changes the game, too, because then you start to situationally work. Maybe you just gave up a four spot. Right. Right. We're, we're the home team, so... If we walk it off, it's over. But if you give up a four spot, you might be just trying to have a quick inning just to turn it around, take the one point loss and get back out there and roll. So if you win the inning, you just get a point. Wow. So, uh, I don't want to say Roger Clemens like got smacked around, but he gave, he gave us some <laughs> runs, right? But And it looks like he only gave up one run. Right. Like wow. that's how it goes. It, it doesn't it does, mean that He just won the much. inning, so you got a point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. So yeah. if you walk a guy, it's not a walk, it's a sprint. Wow. So you, most guys are getting to second base. So if yeah. you do a good job with the defense, you're getting to first. That's a crazy rule. Fan catches a foul ball. We're in Houston. And then in the ninth inning, massive at bat. I'm thinking like, let's go <laughs> yeah. rally the team, rally the troops. Yeah. I hit a foul ball. Guy catches it. 
and I'm in my head. I'm the just, fan, you're talking about fan, right? Fan yeah, so that's I'm, crazy. That's I'm so out. crazy, yeah. I'm raging in my head, but I'm like, okay, for the show, like, you gotta, you gotta be cool, gotta be cool. Yeah. I walk back to the dugout, and a guy comes up, he's like, if it helps, like, that was Drew's brother. Like, Drew's brother just caught that ball. I'm like, no way Drew's brother caught that ball. There's 41,000 people yeah, here. What right? do you mean Drew's brother caught that foul ball? So I watch it back, and his brother leans over the railing, oh my one God. hands this ball. Bare hand? No glove? Bare hand. Oh, my God. Grabs it and threw the ball back from the suite level, and Drew caught it on the mound what? in front of 41,000 people in the ninth inning. Stop it. Swear. Swear. Video's out there. Like, uh, we're going to have to find that and clip that together. It's That's unbelievable. You're like, you can't even get – I mean, you're probably mad still. I'm still, like, still kind of like, mad. <laughs> I'm still kind of mad about it. You're like, it. what? That's but, crazy. But yeah, at least. really cool moment. I mean, yeah. that's – Holy Who shit. else would you want to play defense for you than your brother in a big yeah, league ballpark? Guess, right? Yeah. How many times have they probably played catch or exactly. gone to each other's games, played on the same team? Like That's a pretty badass moment for them. Holy shit. I love that. So, that's wild um what else we got uh, yeah i'm like see. tell me some more stories like dude i'm like i'm going saturday <laughs> night so she went last night i was super jealous i'm going, You're going sa saturday i'm going we're saturday, wearing yeah. kilts on saturday stop yeah so just <laughs> picture everything out like picture us in baseball pants because i don't know if the kilts are for kilts? your demographic oh, i know but. that's what i'm like that's ah, probably not for me but it's yeah right. the girl, there'll be some it is pretty games. freeing nice. it good. is pretty freeing i feel like i'm running faster in kilts with, but yeah, I would imagine a little yeah. lighter. What do you wear high socks with it still? Uh, tights and like high tights. socks. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Are they yellow uh, kilts? Yeah, checkered like yeah, Scottish check bagpipes oh kilts. God. Yeah, this is gonna be amazing. It's gonna so, be fun. did they pull anybody out last night? Were there any special guests last night at LSU? No. We got no. so you don't know any of any of this weekend. No, I mean if Bregman I if Bregman wants to come back, let's go. You said you're back. a huge Bregman I'm fan, a huge, right? Yeah, I'm let's a go. Huge Bregman fan. So you grew uh, up watching him at LSU, or was he already in the major leagues by the time he when was kind of like when I started watching Bregman it was at LSU? I love that because so he I made the him. play up the middle. Yes, like, that's right at the World Series, you, right? That you're talking about. Yeah. You could just say Alex Bregman play up the middle, yeah. and that's it. You yeah. can clip it right there. Everyone knows what you're talking about. That play kind of changed the game for me. Yep. Seeing what oh, you could do, crazy. not not being able to see the base, the 360 spin. That was so impressive to me. It was like, if you can, if you can master that, or if you can get good at that, or you can do that play, you've you're starting to make it as as a defensive player. And then uh, Kramer Robinson comes in and he's got his hair right, Swag. yes, <laughs> long blonde hair, like walk it like I talk it. Yes, I'm like okay, like this is cool. And you just see time and time again, LSU puts out quality baseball players, quality yeah. teams. Okay, well, I want to go play there. Like go Tigers. Awesome. Joe Burrow yes. comes Let's in, go. like swag. Joe Burrow. Yep. And I, I looked cool, at, baby. I watched his uh, senior night walkout last night because you're always thinking of content ideas. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I want to do the Joe Burrow walkout. Where he okay. was wearing Burrow on his back and everything, like with the uh, E, uh, A, U, -A, whatever. Let's go. That was tough. And everyone's like, yeah. this is yep. he's coming out yep. in the tunnel. So I was, we were watching the back of the hotel. I was like, okay, how can I do this? If yeah. I'm in the crowd, okay, can you put a Joe Burrow on the company card? Can oh I get a jersey? God. Can I get a jersey? <laughs> so we'll see. But Jamar Chase, I mean, everybody. It was just, they kind of set the trend basketball-wise. Yes. Even the, the women's basketball team right now. Damn. I watched. Um, Look at it, this, LSU. I'm telling you, we always say LSU. I mean, it's a big reason why I hired Abby, too, to do content mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, she was in Dallas. I'm like, LSU is the biggest brand in sports right now, seriously. And the fact that you're just rattling off these names, you know. Yeah, I watched H. HBL interview. Um, she did a summer camp, and she was talking to the girls at the summer camp, and yeah. her message was super important to find yourself outside of the game of basketball. I watched that the entire thing. I love it. I was tapped in. I was like, that is the coolest message that I think you could give, not just young athletes, but yeah. like female athletes in yeah. general, because how long do you spend invested in this in the sport or multiple sports throughout yeah. your whole career? Yep. And then you get to this point where we talk about fear of failure. Like mm -hmm. you don't want to get a bad grade on the test. You got to get a 90% on the test or better or yep. otherwise it's not an A. Like, yep. okay, you have to hit over 300 or you have to shoot this percentage or yeah, I don't know. Your GPA has to be this to get yeah. into this school. Our game is even more a game of failure too. I talk about this all the time, right? If you hit 300, you're a Hall of Famer, but you're going back to the dugout seven out of ten times. Like that's yeah. crazy. Like, like double the do? amount of times you're going back to the dugout, but you're one of the greatest ever. So it's crazy, right? Like one of the coolest quotes that we throw around pretty consistently in the bananas. Jesse says it all the time: is if you double your failure rate, your success rate is going to yeah, I double. Love like yeah. the quicker you can fail. The more you're going to learn, yep. the better off you're going to be. If you don't get that negative connotation to, oh, I messed up. Yeah. How many people stop after they just mess up? Right. 
Like, okay, they I, freeze. They just, I stopped yeah. after I messed up the first time. Yeah. Well, that was a percentage. Yeah. Well, I stopped after the hundredth time. Well, there's another percentage. Yeah. You just keep going. You're yeah. eventually going to get to where you want to go. Yeah. You just as long gotta, as you learn from your mistakes too, right? That's the biggest thing that I tell everybody it. here. Like, we're going to all fuck up. It's part of it. it. And I don't know. I was like 10 years old when my dad told me. I remember I was like in a little slump, you know, probably went five at bats without getting a hit when you're a kid, you know, mm -hmm. like whatever. He's like, dude, you know what that means, right? He was like, it just means that your next five at bats, you're probably going to get some hits. Like, yeah. he was like, it's law of averages. That's what you do. And I was just like, Oh yeah. And then I kind of just started like applying that the rest of my life. I'm like, all right, there's just, I'm one step closer to success, one step closer to success. So, and that's what entrepreneurship is baseball life, everything, right? Like you're going to fuck up. You're going to mess up. Um, just as long as you learn and bounce back from it, how you respond to it really is what makes success. You know, you just gotta have the ability to just, like you said, just turn the page. Yep. We have a, a coach on our team, uh, Reginald Horton. He's our, <laughs> he's our energy. He's a, he does everything. Hardest working man in banana ball. And he's been there for 20 years. He's worked for the bananas organization in, in wow. Savannah, but he always in our pregame huddle, what's the most important play? And we're like, the next play. <laughs> Simple. It's life. It is. No matter what you can do, I whether you that. had a bad day, like go to bed, wake up, tomorrow's a new day. Yeah. Absolutely. You can kind of control and set your routines. They talked about it last night. Like, yeah, we had a late night, but I still got up early for this interview. Yeah. So I still had my breakfast, like yep. didn't rush myself here. Yeah. So got here early. So I wasn't freaking yep. out about, you know, what is the building or where is it at? You understand that if, if you set yourself up for success, more likely than not, you're going to come out on top. And Absolutely. when you don't, okay, I prepared for that. Nothing else I could have done. So oh, well. What? Yeah. I, say, I tell kids, like when I train with kids, I'm like, so what? That's especially as a pitcher, like, so all right, what? umpire called the ball. So what? Give me the ball. Like mm -hmm. batter hit it over the fence. So what? Give me the ball. Like, that's it. Like, so what? Like, go. Um, that's it, man. I, I love hearing that. And especially, you know, so many kids look up to you. So many people look up to you. Um, you guys are captivating so many fans right now. So it's cool to hear, you know, just even performers, people that, um, you know, play at the highest level that like yourself, um, have that mindset. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough to sit down with some really great people and do this podcast and stuff. And there's a lot of commonality with that, you know, being mm -hmm. able to just bounce back from adversity and things like that and, and how you respond to things. I always say you can react or you can respond, you know, and, and reaction is usually quick and negative, And those are usually the emotional ones, anger, frustration. Right. right. But if you can really think about it and you can respond, that's usually when the growth comes and the success comes after that. So I love hearing that. Our coach always says, don't back down from a challenge. We get thrown challenges all the time. Like yeah. you got to adapt to it. We just went from Houston. We come to LSU based off the weather, the game moves. We can't get on the field until game day. That's right. So that means yeah. I can't take ground balls. We Nothing. can't do good. Can't get okay. familiar with the atmosphere. What are you going to do? Yeah. Okay. okay. So what? I'm going to go get point. extra work the day we get there. Right. Like I'm going to get out there. I'm going to get familiar with the sites. I'm going to get my feet on the ground and really get comfortable so that when the crowd hits, it's, it's nothing new. We got to Houston a day early, and I'm very thankful that we had a walkthrough. So we played basically a, a scrimmage nine innings, oh, coach nice. pitch, yeah. went through half of our show or like our rehearsals, all that stuff, so that the next night, it felt like we belong there. Yeah. First day it was like Coliseum. Yeah, exactly. I, was, yeah. I don't belong here. Eyes are open. What are yeah, we this doing? is crazy. Yeah, what are absolutely. we doing? And by the time we got done with rehearsals, I was okay. I got it. I'm ready, I'm ready yeah. to do this. And we ran out from center field right underneath that Houston H. They put our banana Sick. thing up, tunnel up, and you went one by one oh through the crowd, kind of like football. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, we're running out of here. I deserve to be here. Hell yeah. This is this is what we're supposed to do. And yep. It's very cool because we're going to go to Fenway, and I've never been to what? Fenway. Fenway? Let's <laughs> yeah. go. So my That's dad and I ass. both have never been to Fenway. Yeah. And multiple times through his travel, through our travel, we've gotten really close to the stadium. Yeah. But we're like, promised, like, we're going to go together. Yeah. So, oh, my God. I got chills, bro. That's yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, so the first time we're going to go, I'll be playing. You're playing. That's. I yeah. got chills, dude. I seriously got chills. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. So dude. My dad's real close to me, too, so I just love hearing stories like that. Like, you can just tell. We he's spent a lot close. of baseball. I a imagine. A <laughs> lot of tournaments, a yeah. lot of reps, a yep. lot of games where, yeah, we might go to, I'm, a, I'm from Pittsburgh, so we might go to a Pirates game, yeah. but we would go to minor league games all the time. We yeah. would drive an hour, an hour 30 to go to some of these minor yeah, league yeah. games. A Mahoney Valley Scrappers was an Indian, it's now the Guardians affiliate yeah, in yeah. Ohio. Yep. <clears throat> we would drive out there all the time. One of my best friends gets picked up by the Phillies. He's working his way through the system. I'm kind of tracking him. This is post-college before the banana, so right. I'm out of baseball, gotcha. right? Yeah. And he's pitching in that same stadium. Oh, wow. So I made that same drive oh, to God. go watch, like, your boys. watch your boys, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's just being able to share that game of baseball and then the history of it. 
Like Fenway Park? Are you kidding me? That's crazy. Are dude. you kidding You're me? literally going to be on shortstop with some of the, like, at shortstop. For Monster in the where? background. I'm going to be looking like, okay, Manny Ramirez ran in the wall yep. right here. <laughs> yes. Like, Big Make Poppy sure. hit his home run over the ball. Go check out all the there. signatures. on. So, like, I'm, I'm sure gonna, you're I'm probably going to sign. I'm going to sign, sign Pesky's pool. You got to go sign. Yeah. I'm going to wrap my home run around Pesky's pool. Let's go. I've been, oh, I've been manifesting. Now. I'm a big manifester. It's on camera. I'm manifesting that I'm hitting my one home run, if not maybe more, maybe two yeah. home runs at Fenway Park. <laughs> Let's go. And it's going to be right around Pesky's pool. Yeah, just get it a little early. Get the head out a little early. Yeah. Get underneath. It's only 315 or something. You just got to get it in the air. That's it. I'm going to be super nice to the party animals that week and just, like, take care of anything that they need. Like, get all hey, the good juju on your side i'm not saying that you gotta let me hit it but just throw a fastball like just give middle, me something middle yeah, middle, middle let me get if out i miss it, ahead of it another one middle middle <laughs> but, uh, that's awesome yeah. um you you said rehearsal a couple times so talk to me i've always wondered right you guys do all these routines dances i'm like does it just come natural to these guys like i so it was no dance, that's what no. i gotta know my right? first ever my first ever middle school <laughs> dance i had a girl tell me that i could, like can't dance it was like the scariest thing ever right <laughs> yeah. so we and go, now here you are short, yeah. middle of the field fucking right this shit. Yeah. and when we first get to the bananas the first dance we did was in those kilts and it was the <laughs> you, i don't know if you remember like the drop challenge like uh, the original yeah. like beyonce yeah yep. that was it and all of a sudden it turned into these more elaborate dance moves <laughs> It's at the point now where we're getting dance videos sent to us all the time. There's days where I don't have to like physically look at the video yeah. because I know that we're going to learn the steps together yeah. and I can, okay, we can pick this up. Boom, boom, boom. Is that like a choreographer who comes in and teaches you or is it like you guys got to know so now? So we have uh, Zach Frontalo is our director of entertainment. He's worked for the Vegas Golden Knights for a long time. He's okay, ran our nice. show for a few years. The man's, a, he's extremely talented, but he, he can walk us through the dances. We have Macy, our dancing first base coach, um, who's a great dance teacher. He's an incredible dancer. So we have multiple people within the organization. We have two um, girls, who, but one for the party animals and one for the bananas who help run the show and direct choreography. They teach us a lot of dances. Uh, TikTok teaches us a lot of dances. Like you see stuff nice. on your for you yeah, page, yeah, it's like, yeah. okay. This was kind of hard and you can usually find a tutorial <laughs> video but we'll have I love it we call them i actually got a tattoo. i don't have too many tattoos but i have one tattoo for our dances on the field so it's a three two two it usually happens in the third inning second batter second pitch oh my god so those videos usually come from TikTok, and we'll get together and there's fear sometimes of okay we don't know it right <laughs> um the one in minute made we didn't even get it off just based off of the time frame but i remember oh like god. sitting there and i'm in the dugout I'm trying to worry about at bats. Yeah, in my exactly. Head, like, you think of the day. <laughs> yeah. We finally got to run that one last night. Um, it's actually, I think, it, hopefully, it's doing well. They posted it last night on the bananas page. How did it look? Was it good? Yeah, they looked it good. It was pretty good. She was there. She, I was there. <laughs> it was okay. I think it's on the bananas Instagram. I gotta go check it out. Yeah, that's but, incredible. I mean, the first videos that I ever saw, I was like, this pitcher is doing it like in the middle of pitches. Like mm -hmm. he's throwing it, catching it, and doing it. I'm like, this is. I can't imagine this. Like as a hitter too, you kind of <laughs> you kind of get excited for them to dance against you because yeah. if like the party animals do in the sixth inning. Sometimes okay, your heart rates up. Yeah, as a exactly. as a as a batter, I'm like yeah. your heart rates up. You already know you're gonna throw me an elevated exactly. fastball, yep. or you're gonna miss with your off speed pitch. Like, <laughs> it's but if you throw the strike, like last night was a strike in yeah, that pitch. So, it's really cool. I'm yeah. sitting at a shortstop. I just finished dancing, hit the clap, pitch goes in. And I'm like, <laughs> it was a middle middle. I'm like what are you, are you taking middle? I love it. We had uh, our center fielder's super springy. You can backflip, jump out of the ballpark. He jumped over our six foot three or six foot four Jeez. pitcher the other day over his head through the pitch and the ball was hit right back between our pitcher's legs oh my god it's like you you got the whole ballpark like, yeah hit it. and that's you had to hit it 105 yeah, right, right between my legs oh my god dude that would scare the that's shit party animals me. third yeah. baseman bryson bloomer he's he's so else. <laughs> tell us how you really feel yeah he's a good guy <laughs> no, except just, he won't let me on his esports team bryson bloomer if you're watching oof. this let me on your esports team esports team that, we play video games yeah so no, that's we, it. we talk practice all day yeah. uh me and bloomer have similar music tastes so we yeah. we hang out all the time as we're taking ground balls yeah and he goes home and he streams his four Fortnite or Call That's of Duty awesome. or yeah. like whatever he's doing, yeah. but he runs with his hometown boys or his party animal boys. Yeah. So I always yeah, give him crap. Fucked up, bro. Man, like, like, bro, you don't want to run it? <laughs> like, what do I got to do for you? I yeah, missed a like, ground no, ball. You're you, a banana, dude. Get I missed a ground ball that you hit. The Roy Oswald ground ball yeah. was his. I missed that for you, bro. You're on base. <laughs> let me, let me <laughs> run it. Off, let me run Roy it. Roy Oswald, yeah. Yeah, I just want to be on your esports team. That's all I'm asking. Simple stuff. Let's just drop. Where we drop? Yeah, it's not that hard. God damn. 
That's hilarious. Um, what about the umpire? Does he travel every game with y'all? Yeah. What's his name? Vincent. Oh, my God. He's awesome. Yeah, he's from Texas. Uh, he is really – like, we talk about like, growing, right? Yeah. He, in his first year as umpire, trying to figure out a big league zone and yeah. doing that stuff, yeah. to now it's gotten so much better. Yeah. And then to put on a show, it's the crowd is – might be the loudest all game yeah. when he gets out there and starts shaking it. I'm fired up to watch him on Saturday. So I just kind of so, some days, <laughs> depending on the depending on where the moves are at. Yeah. Like some days I'm watching him, and other days I'm just kind of like letting everybody. I'm just like looking elsewhere. Like, <laughs> You're like, no. I missed these things because he's putting on a show. Yeah. Like, he he throws the mask up. And yeah. It's, he does. It's he's un, twerking and he's doing all kinds of shit. Yeah, I can't move like that. Oh, me either. I'm I cannot move like that. that. No. My first real dance. We had a, like a weigh-in in Daytona Beach, which is like the beginning of the game. They'll do like a little square off thing. Yeah. And, um, it was ended up being a twerk off. That was, wow. And this is like, coach, did you know that this going was, into? No, this oh, was boy. coach coach me mentality. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I'm like I'm not gonna get out there. And I blacked out. I don't remember like a but single minute of it. But I did it. Yeah. And after it's that, on I was like, well, it can't be can't be that bad. <laughs> like nobody's nobody's running their mouth at I me. Love so. it. Um, all right. Well, talk to me about the fingernail and the hair, the, the hair. Yeah. Dying. So what's the, what's any specific meaning or what's so the, the fingernail started? I had uh, two of my female cousins come to a game and I don't get to see them too often. Yeah. So they came down to Savannah two falls ago Okay. and they're like, Oh, let me paint your nails. So we just did the fingers like this color yeah. yellow. And I was like, I don't know if you can see it. Like we'll do my whole hand. Yeah. So we did both hands and this was a Thursday. We played Friday. The guys and I went out, and it was like a, a country line bar. Yeah. So I'm first of all, I'm from the north. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, a I don't. Line bar. I I'm okay. You're I like country there? music, but yeah. like I'm not listening. I don't to like country. country. Music. I'm yeah. with you, bro. I'm yeah. That's so, literally. I'm pretty open about everything. <laughs> country music is not my thing. Bro. I'm already. I'm already in a space where I'm not the top of the top here, <laughs> right? And now I got my hands painted like yeah. yellow. So I got my hands sh shoved in my pockets. Walking around the bar, looking at everybody, uh, like, what's going on? Great. And it took me probably about 30 minutes to realize I'm never really walking around looking at people's fingernails. Yeah. And if I was, what would you say to me? Right. There's nothing you could say that's really going to offend me or do anything different. Like, why does it bother you is my question. Exactly, right? Yeah, and then so. it kind of took its own persona. So they thought it was cool. They opened me up to it. And these they were probably 14, 12 yeah. at that yeah. time. Yeah. And awesome. I was like, so okay, I just do it for with them. them and everything too. Yeah. yeah. So now I paint my nails all the time. So you started. do them? I was going to ask. Like the checker, it looks like a pretty detailed right there. <laughs> I went to the salon for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, bro, if you know how to do that, that's yeah. really impressive. No, it yeah. started. Like, I, you're already dancing. You're already doing this stuff. I'm like, damn, if you're painting your nails too, I'm like, you got it, bro. It started, I would, I would paint in the beginning and they were, yeah, they were like rough, the story, but everyone yeah. was nice to me and they were like, oh yeah, these are nice. <laughs> like, yeah, sure they are. Um, oh, awesome. Then I had stickers sent for a while. So I was doing like stick on ones. Yeah. I those, thought they might've been stickers cause they look cool. good. I was like, damn, those are pro. They gotta be stickers. And now yeah. I'll try to keep up with them and get them done like, professionally. For real, for real, Just, yeah. If you're going to do it, might as well do, do it right. right? Yeah. And Pinterest is a cool place. I get a lot of really cool <laughs> ideas. And then we're in Houston. We had the off day on Sunday nothing the nothing to do like yeah, we're gonna yeah. travel to lsu so i was just walking around the mall i was like okay i'll go get my hair dyed because yeah. i started dyeing my hair last year okay you know how in high school everyone would dye their hair for playoffs yeah yeah i was never allowed to do that right so now it's like do free it rain, yeah, it's, free it's rain. encouraged it's like please do it let do me ball yeah. let me ball <laughs> so my i've done like blonde i've done a, a blue i've done like a silver a platinum recently it was super long and blonde and then about three weeks ago was my birthday. I just Shit. buzzed it. Normal. <laughs> I was like, I have to feel like I have to feel yeah, normal yeah, yeah, again. Yeah. So my hair wasn't all natural. And there was a salon at the mall in Houston. I was like, I don't got anything to do. Let's see if they can take me. I was going to do a minty green for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. It's like, cool. We're coming to LSU. Like it, it'll, it'll be fun. And I was sitting there and I was on Pinterest, like in the salon, literally yeah. in the salon. She's bleaching my hair. No. And I was like, well, I've been watching a lot of Avatar, and here's an Avatar <laughs> thing. I just binged the whole season. I watched yeah. the cartoon growing up. I was like, well, let's send it. Let's we'll go. try it. Yeah. She's like, you sure? I was like, why not? I could always cut it and shave yeah, it and do whatever. So I posted it, and some fans had some cool reactions. And then last night. I saw that. The... Uh, it looked really cool on the board. Yeah. It looked really cool. I had some fans coming up say so it was real. I made a play and I just went like straight into the avatar. Like, <laughs> head state. So yeah. Saturday, you're going to be there Saturday. Yeah, I, have, yeah. I have an avatar walkout on Saturday. Let's go. And I think we're going to try to make like a play where I do something. But after the game, I had 
wherever my hat was. I had that snapback on. Yeah. And they were like, can we take a picture? But can you take your hat off? Yeah, that's so great. It's like, oh no, can you put your head down? Yeah. Like, oh, you, no, don't, you even, don't want me. You don't you want, want me to yeah. look at yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You just might, yeah. It's cool though, because yeah, you're it paying is. attention to me. You think yeah. like that stuff's cool and kids are seeing that. Hey, you can you can be yourself and you could be that's way different and yep. still still rock that and be comfortable in that have fun in that and, and make that a, a confident look yep. i do smiley face eye black so everyone wants to do like nice. really sick eye yeah, luck yeah. so i do the like in the yeah. little smiley face yeah not for anything it just kind of started catching on and then we were in indianapolis last year i saw a fan come up to me in the post game plaza party and this young girl had the, the eye black smiley uh, faces uh, that's so awesome like, this, this is, is this is the reason why yeah, i do what i do exactly and bro. fans like whether it's my style of eye black or doing their own style my like their teammate style just to have fun with the game yeah. literally we talk just keep putting the splashes on yep. look at that thing with the splashes on yep. encouraging people to be themselves and that's and just embrace be you. them and like, just be comfortable literally be you. you and like whatever that is to you right that's where i'm like I, I think people you know in my life have made a lot of assumptions about me height tattoos all this stuff i'm like i'm like the biggest nerd i like dorky shit mm -hmm. i like i have a collectible shop and now it's like that's why i do what i do i'm like let's go talk about cards let's go talk about comics like <laughs> let's go talk about funko pops like that's the shit i like and people are like really and I'm like yeah that's what i fucking like i like art like you know yeah. like and it's that's why i love I, I saw you guys two or three years ago and started following. I was like, this is fucking amazing because it's just going to get people to be themselves. And that's what baseball never had. It was like, no, no you have to be this way. I remember being in the clubhouse, just being not comfortable in my own skin because mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I had to wear these cleats and tuck my pants exactly like this. Make sure my, you yeah. know, blah, blah, blah. my hat fits this way. The beard fits this way. I'm like, and I never, I remember getting my tattoos and being scared to be like, well, I wonder what the Red Sox are going to think of this, you know? And it's like, right. it's crazy. I just want to get some stuff that represents me that I like, that tells my story. And it's like, that's why I love what you guys are doing. And like, that's why I asked about the nails. And I want you to tell people about that shit, embrace it. And the ki fact that kids are doing what you're doing is means the world, I think, to me and, and the message out there that I think is really, really important to, especially nowadays with social media and mental health and all that stuff, right? It's like, huge. It's huge. And it's you just huge. want people to embrace it and love, them, love themselves, whatever that is for them. So I mean, I feel like it's, it's still every day. It's like a, you, you balance that stuff every day. Yeah. You don't just master it no, and, and yeah. then move on from it. Like yesterday, I'm, I'm filming TikToks and i had maybe three or four different pieces of content that for my level of stuff wasn't 10 out of 10 but it was yeah. something that I, I was ready i had a post about being here in lsu yeah. i wanted to make sure we got it done three or four different times i was i was waging like mental battles with myself about you don't look good dancing here you look silly doing this <laughs> yeah. and you're always battling that stuff yeah but the more that you can just be comfortable being yourself i think people relate to the auth authenticity of like the bananas the mm -hmm. auth authenticity of who you are as a human being yep some of my favorite teammates are people who have just carved themselves out being themselves jackson olsen's uh my roommate on the road and my best friend he was famous long before he got here That's he awesome. built yeah. that following long before he got yeah. here because he was making videos about doing instacart videos and um <clears throat> you know the stats and stuff and then once he was going to mlb ballparks and just being like a, a fan showing yeah. people his life being yeah very vulnerable but very yeah. unique yeah and it's okay you don't have to have the the swaggiest chain or drive the coolest car on the block you can yep. you know play roblox and <laughs> hop on fortnite yep. or be invested in art you can take photography whatever it is yep. you want to do like just be proud of that yeah people like that authenticity you know authenticity and it's like i think i realized too my whole life i stopped playing <laughs> baseball at 28 or 29 um, and I just always thought, you know, people gravitated towards me cause I was a baseball player and I was talking, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Right. And I realized I, I connected deeper with people when I was done playing baseball, like so much more on the human level. I'm like, Oh shit, this is way better. Just because I think people felt like they could connect to me more. You know, it wasn't this, Oh, I would never be a professional athlete. Like, you, you know, like whatever. And I'm like, no, I'm just a normal person. And that's what I love the most. It's like, I actually haven't, I mean, I've had my struggles, you know, transitioning into everyday life and things mm -hmm. like that. But, um, I think I've embraced it so much cause I've connected with so many people on that level and they've just been like, it's been more down to earth and more authentic to me. And that's what I love about my shop. I love about my podcast. I get to have these kinds of conversations and, and show more people that the more that you do that, the more that you love yourself, the happier you truly are. And like how much you just can enjoy life. Like for real. Thankfully I had the, the, that perspective in baseball out of my life before I got back to the bananas. So like indie ball had ended. And before that I would have introduced myself, Hey, Ryan Cox, like I'm a shortstop. Yeah. That would have been the first thing out exactly. of my mouth. Yeah. Right. You would have been yeah. like pitcher. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like, yep. 
finding out that there's more to myself, more to this whole thing than the game of baseball. I started reading again. I started getting back into mm-hmm. books. I read, have you ever read The Alchemist? So oh. it's a story about a shepherd, right? Yeah. And I'm, yeah. You can read the book. It's, it's probably like 200, 300 pages, but it just tells a story about where he comes from and it just circles all the way back around. Every single lesson along the way had this meaning and it just started opening like all these doors in my mind that, hey, I'm not just a baseball player. Yeah. I have these interests. I am this person. And it started really shaping it. So when I got the opportunity to play the game again, <laughs> I played the game as the truest version of myself where I wasn't super frustrated about okay, did I get a hit or did I make an error? It was yeah. very, very easy for me to turn the page. It was very easy for me to not go in and you see the teammates, the guys who want to go in there and punch a water cooler or like, <laughs> you know, it's oh, very yeah. easy to, to avoid those kind of situations because I'm starting to just have fun and, and witness that perspective of being myself. Yep, then the message starts to come through with how you're acting, how you're walking, how you're dressing, where my fashion sense is very outward. I wear some crazy stuff. I paint my nails. It's very you know forward i like yeah. talking about mental health i like yeah. i like doing all those things where not that any of that stuff is is brand new i'm not the inventor of any of that but it's the progression so that the kids see it yep. so that they understand that it's cool yep. it doesn't matter what your interests are if they're reading books like chase everything try everything fail at everything Ooh, try everything so yeah, that, you, that you figure yeah. out what you want to do yeah, and what you're good at what you're not good at i'm the you're... pickiest eater why i didn't try anything it's literally my so... palate developed and now i'm here like you want to hear I, i'm chicken fingers and fries <laughs> man I, I was the pickiest eater ever and i was it was all health related uh-huh. usually you know i felt like i knew exactly what i wanted to do and then i had an opportunity to go play in korea and so i played a year over in korea and i was like well, shit, I'm not gonna be able to be a picky eater over there. So I, mm. before I went over there, I just kind of decided in my head, I was like, I'm gonna embrace everything in their culture. I'm gonna eat all the food. I'm not even gonna think twice. And now I literally eat everything. Like, I don't even think about it. I'm like, give me it. I wanna try it. Like, there's nothing that I don't enjoy. And it's so crazy how much you have that, when you have that open perspective that you're like, oh shit, I actually do like this food. And I used yeah. to say I didn't like this food, you know? Mm. Um, so those kinds of things are just so eye-opening. You know, you only get those with more laps around the sun as we get right. older and more experience and stuff. So, um, but that is why I do this podcast right hopefully some kid can hear this and look up to you and be like wait all right he does this like i've always wanted to paint my nails i've always wanted to dye my hair it doesn't Mm -hmm. mean this it doesn't mean that like you know there's stereotypes or stigmas whatever it is and it's like no actually don't go do what you want to do it doesn't mean anything it's cool to just step out of the the beaten path everyone's either wearing the same thing or doing the why not why not just add a little bit of flavor to it absolutely christian mccaffrey i watched an interview about him and he was talking about he went to a nice like prep school on game days, they had to wear nice stuff. He was like, "I'm not wearing that. I'm wearing yeah. sweatpants." Right? <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't matter if you, you know, bend those just a little bit, just so yeah. you, you're being yourself, so that you're comfortable. As long as you're you're moving in a team forward or a world yeah, friendly exactly. fashion, yeah. like rely on your morals, work hard, yep. be yourself. Be and yourself. If they don't like you for that, then that's their problem. Yeah, like, exactly. They can keep going, and I'm gonna keep going about my day. It's no harm, no foul, and yep. you know the world's big enough for, for us all. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and that's why I. I've, you know, I've been on other podcasts. People have asked me things. And, you know, as I get older and stuff, what would you have told your 20 year old self or 25 would say the same thing every time? Just be you. Do what you want to do. Like, and if that means that it's kind of different in the clubhouse, like, who cares? Like, that was my biggest thing is I just wanted to fit in. I just wanted to be normal. I just wanted to be whatever. And I just hate that, like, I had that mindset at that so age. So hard walking around and, like, looking over your shoulder all the time. It's Because whether you want to step on somebody, position battles, right? You're stepping yeah, yeah. on somebody's shoes or a veteran guy in the clubhouse yeah. or you know, different backgrounds and you're worried about how this might come across. Yep. So just be confident. Exactly. Like you're, you're here for good intentions. You're That's what I was to say, your intentions. Yeah. Okay, so as long as your all, intentions all your are intentions good. are, yeah. you're trying to help the team win right. first and foremost. You're trying to, to be a good person. You're yep. trying to, you know, build that family environment. You're trying to learn about other people. But it doesn't mean that you always have to agree. Right. Like I, I can hear, that's the cool thing about the bananas is everything's happening so fast. You can, you can have an opinion, you can have an idea and somebody can respectfully tell you no and yeah. you don't get, no one's getting offended. Exactly. Because it's an open, honest conversation yeah. where you know that you're getting listened to, they're considering it. We have so many people from so many different backgrounds. Our fans come from so many backgrounds, whether it's different countries, different states, different ethnicities. Like. Yep. It's crazy to think that your way is the way and you know all. Exactly. That's right. what the biggest that's thing so is. Ignorant. Yeah, that's, once, yeah. once you admit that you know nothing. Literally. That's the <laughs> best admit, thing. Just admit you don't, I don't know, know everything. Yep. Nothing is set in stone. Everything yep. can, can change and, and not be fact. And yep. 
Um, my way no, is no different than yours. I'm, I'm open to trying new things. Yeah. And I think that's how everyone should consider it. All it all goes back to that fear of failure too, right? Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you know nothing, then you can't ever, like, if you're fearing failure, then you know everything, right? No, no, I'm right, I'm right. You can't be wrong. Like, I can't right. be wrong. That's failing technically, right? So it all comes back to that. And um, it's crazy how that mindset really does, like, create freedom, happiness, comfortability, um, and it makes you connect with people on just such a deeper level. So I love that. Yeah. You get, you get past that first stage of listening. Like yep. some people already have a response to the first three words of your sentence. Oh my God. I hate that. Like hear the, hear the rest You're of my thought. To yeah. Hear the rest of my thought. Yeah. You don't know where I'm going. Yeah. I'm, I'm a yapper. I'm a professional yapper. Yeah. <laughs> I might change the conversation halfway through yeah. and you know, the message might change. So yeah. just hear what I have to say. And, um, a lot of fans have shown some, some really cool stuff, whether that's baseball history or, you know, sad personal stories, like yeah. whatever the case may be. So many fans have shared so many unique things that all these bracelets, like I was one, yeah, fans, I saw a bunch of the team teammates, your mm -hmm. teammates have them too. Right? We have, uh, we usually have those big gold chains yeah, yeah, on. Yeah. Um, I had a, I had a kid that I teach lessons, give me a necklace for my birthday. I had a fan give me a necklace, like the next week after that. And then I posted just like my normal content and the girl who made the necklace, thank you so much for wearing it in an MLB, in your first MLB ballpark. Like the fans are tapped into yeah, what we're doing. Absolutely. They, they really want to kind of have that Taylor Swift effect where <laughs> you have the engagement. I'll trade bracelets. I'll trade necklaces. Yeah. Um, there'll be kids that's coming cool. up. Can I have a ball? No, but can I please have a bracelet? Yeah. Like that's a whole different sentence. Yeah, yeah. Am I wow. coming up and expecting a baseball? Right. Or coming up and wanting to engage or maybe maybe they'll offer something. I had a kid, they give those uh, Dunkin' Donuts $2 cards out. Yeah. Some kid finesses system and came up to me with like 40 of them. Oh my God. And he was like, he was like, I'll give you 20 of these if you give me your headband or your arm sleeve yeah. or something. Oh and I, I just gave him the arm sleeve. I was like, Hey man, respect the hustle. Keep the cards. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't That's need the cool. Duncan, but yeah. you know, that's cool. I do love Duncan. I do need Duncan if you're watching. <laughs> but I don't need the Duncan cards. But the kid, like, you respect the hustle. That's a I'd Northeast thing, baby. Let's go. Let's, yeah, we don't have too many yeah, Dunkin' yeah, Donuts yeah, down yeah. here. It crushes yeah, my there's heart. There's a lot of Starbucks. Yeah, it's a ton of Starbucks. Yeah. Duncan's uh, our partner. And Is this, it? Let's go. Uh, yeah, right here in my heart. Cool. Caramel yeah. ice. Exactly. <laughs> but That's what got me into coffee, honestly. That's what. And, I wasn't uh, a coffee guy until, like, college. Yeah, I wasn't a coffee guy until, like, 20. I was in Pro Bowl, like, two or three years in a Pro Bowl. Wow. Honestly, yeah. Like, so I was 23. You ever have um, like Colombian, like like Colombian coffee? I've had all. Yeah, I'm uh, like now I'm like I just drink black coffee. It's like I'm uh, I see, love I coffee. Have, yeah, I have to have something like, in it, yeah. some sweetener. Yeah. Mm. I, I love the sweetener. Don't get me wrong, but there's sometimes I just like I'm like give me my cold brew with a shot of espresso, so it has the full coffee black. They're like just black, and I'm like, yep, that's I'm it. Get another coffee yeah. after this. Yeah, yeah no, I need sure. to get one too. Um, I'll, I'm gonna let you go here in a few minutes, but just a couple more questions. Yeah, um, go ahead. Dude. What's the that. day in the life of a Savannah banana? So like you guys are on the road. You guys are on the road ten days right now. You're in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Obviously today. We're fortunate enough to have your time here, but what's normal? What do you guys normally do? Um, I would say that my my day is a little bit different because, like, you understand the clubhouse. I I like my routine, so yeah. I'll make sure I'm super early. I have okay. guys joke with me that like I'm too early, right? Dude, I was the same way when I played. Bro. We're Seriously. in we're in Houston, and I think we had to be on field by four. Yeah, and I didn't know if I could shower and have time to like get into uniform again before that, so yeah. I was ready at like two forty five. <laughs> And I had a teammate come up to me and he's like, so you're telling me that I'm in full uniform right now because you had to take a shower. <laughs> I was like, yeah. So um, yes. usually I'll get up. I try to stay on an early schedule, even though that we have a long day just yeah. for, you know, circadian rhythm. And like, nice. I, I like to journal and yeah. do all Let's that go. stuff. So I, I get up, it. I'll get up probably 8.30, 9 o'clock, go down, have breakfast, hang out for an hour or so, go to the gym, uh, go get a workout in if I can't. Like on site, I'll try to go to the field early before nice. the buses yeah, yeah. to get a workout in. Usually lay around for about an hour to lunch at noon. Uh, lunch is 12 to 1. 1 o'clock we start rehearsals, so we'll figure out what run celebrations we're going to do, what walk-ups we have that day, what you know dances we got, anything. For example, when we come to a new city, where are we going to be for March at the beginning of the game? Where are we going to be at the end of the game with fans and plaza party? Last night, I was not where I was supposed to be, and I got absolutely swarmed. You saw me last Re night. Oh. Everybody else was on the other side, and I got trapped. This is after the game or before yes, the game? Yes, this okay. is after the game. So we did it. 41,000 people, fantastic. We had signs. Everything was every. It was so organized, so yeah. like perfect yeah. for a player. Last night, I got out there a little bit late, 
and right where they have the statue and the memorial. Yeah, yeah. Everybody else was, if you're looking at the box from the memorial, they're on the left side. Okay. I was on the right side. Oh, boy. And you're full uni up and... Yeah, it was just like just a target. It, it was very cool because I, I almost wanted to take a picture where I had probably 15 or 20 baseballs like in, your, in yeah, my yeah, face. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just wanted to pull my phone out and just like snap. <laughs> you wanted the aerial Can I take picture? a 0.5 yeah, real quick? Yeah, yeah, Can exactly. I take a 0.5 of this? But it was it was cool. Yeah. But I was also getting like claustrophobic. I wasn't around Imagine, any of my yeah. teammates. It yeah, wasn't yeah. where's Coach Rack? Where's Jackson right, Olsen? Right, like right. I was there by myself, um, but it was a really cool experience to, to see that. Um, that's really cool. I went on a tangent. Well, day in the life. No, okay. no, no. That's, so, I, that's part of it. That is part of the one life. One o'clock, plaza party. We figure out where all that's at. I, I made it. Train came back. <laughs> and after we heard that, we'll back. hit BP 2.30, 2.45. We will have to be back on field probably 4.30 for what we call VIB. Okay. Very important bananas. Uh, that's our closest fans, our K club, we I think we had probably 500 people in the ballpark uh, at that time. Okay. Where you're signing autographs, playing catch with kids, cool. doing nice. like cool. all this yep. stuff. Yep. We'll run another rehearsal right there for them, kind of nice. uh, right about five you get o'clock. A little sneak peek or whatever preview. And yeah. for us, that last little bit of if you don't know it, figure it, it out. Yeah, get it now. Yeah. yeah. We had a very intense walk up. Our first batter for the bottom half of the first in Houston. And in the video, we, we crushed it. First of all, we crushed it. <laughs> but in the video, you can see me. I'm talking to Jackson on my right. And one point in the video, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> that little bit of panic where your heart oh, sinks and you're just I like, was oh. Panicking. It, was, yeah. it was this huge piece where the four of us are starting out on the line and he walks out and we end up at home plate. It's probably a 45 second to a minute production. And somewhere in the middle, I forgot a little bit of the dance. I was in the right spot. I made, we made it look great. Yeah. I think I, I would hit, if this was a test, 83%, like 84%. Yeah, so I'm passing. Yeah, it's, passing it's for B. sure. That might be a B yeah, in some I'm in places. Yeah, 3 0, 3 0 GPA. I yeah, can send my solid. GPA. That's center. seriously solid. Yeah. But, but not I, to your you standards. Can see yeah, me, you can see me say, I don't know. And then you picked it right back up because I knew where we were at. And, <laughs> and it looked great. And DR had a good at bat. That's awesome. So we hit BP, VIB. Yep. 5 30 we go to march and then from there we have this huge script in the dugout of where you're supposed to be what your promotion is where your walk-ups are at so you gotta if you have to be out signing autographs or taking pictures otherwise i'll start warming up probably 5 55 6 o'clock 6 30 we run our warm-up so we come flying out of the dugouts nice uh, <laughs> go through some ground balls it's a lot of show there's baseballs everywhere <laughs> And we have I can't wait to see this. Yeah. We have probably twenty guys in the infield at one point and we're throwing three baseballs across the infield. That's wild. corner, corner, middle. Yeah. It's pretty scary. Like yeah. I'll catch one and I'll have a ball like Dude, coming that's... right in front of my face. Yeah. Um I'm gonna, game I'm gonna starts get there at early. seven. Seven o'clock games usually. Game starts. Yeah, I'm gonna get there early. Early. We had fans outside yesterday at twelve. 30, well, I saw, I saw, so we, I was coming here for, I had a podcast at like one or something yesterday. There was fans outside like tailgating, getting ready. They had, I was like, damn, this is like, just like a, it's legit. like a LSU game it's too. Legit. Like people, like people were going crazy. It's awesome. I'm hoping that with today being Friday and then tomorrow being a oh, day yeah, game, yeah. that the tailgates really start. Cause our, yeah. We're in the batting cage. Just we, that's where we're, our locker room is. So, oh, really? Yeah. Let's so, go. You can see out and, and you can see all the fans, right? Right. Yeah. So oh I, if they're cooking good food, I'm going to go out there. Yeah. And 100%. See, see you, need to. Get, yeah, so. you need to go get experience that for sure. Yeah. Uh, games seven to nine, two hours. And Tomorrow's five. a day game? Saturday. Yeah. Saturday? Yeah. Today's okay. Friday? Yeah. yeah today's I just Friday. said that. Um, wow. I thought it was a Saturday night game. I didn't know that. Oh. Well, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Somebody actually, just, like, actually I'm going let me double friends. check that. No, no, that's okay. I yeah. don't know. I think it's a day game. Yeah, probably is. I we play know. a lot. And yeah, dude, I, I get it all the time. Like, as long as I until that the, the night before, as you long know? as I'm there on the schedule. Yeah, like my family and everything. They ask me, "Where yeah. are you going? What's this like, week?" Dude, and I'm like, I'm "Taking it day by day." I am yeah. very much where my feet are. Yes, I exactly. Cannot see past yeah. this right. I mean, I didn't even. I'm, I have scheduled it. I scheduled it, and I didn't even know what it is tomorrow. I know we play at seven o'clock, and I know we lost night game. It's a night game. Saturday. Okay. So I then yeah, scratch that. Yeah, that's all right. Night game. <laughs> Kill, the kills well, look better you, at night anyway. Okay. So you guys are out Saturday night, right? You guys leave Saturday night? Sunday. Sunday, okay. Yeah. So you guys are here Saturday night? Yes. Ooh, all right. Well, you guys got, what do you got? Do you guys have some nightlife? Do you guys have opportunities to go out yeah, and do stuff? And yeah, and I've done a lot of, like, we've had some really cool stuff. We were in, we were in Vegas last year. Oh, God, Went nice. to a Cirque du yeah. Soleil show. Um, 
we ended up going to some club like dead mouse was there nice. just happened to be performing yeah. it was really really cool trying to find the right spots for it and like when the yeah, time absolutely. is yeah, uh, yeah. obviously we all work hard we deserve to celebrate right right but you know as a ball player too if if we get swept that weekend I don't want to go out. Yeah, there's like, not I, a lot of energy. I, I don't to want to go, go do yeah. that. No. Um, so we did lose last night. So hopefully, we, if we win on Saturday, we'll have some go. time to, right. to go out and celebrate. Good. But uh, the party animals, like, they'll go out, they'll have a good time, but everyone picks their moments, right? Yeah, if, that's smart. Yeah. If you're a pitcher and you pitched Thursday night, that's, you can go out and, exactly. you know, still show up and be entertaining. Yeah. But there's a whole different ball game to bouncing back and being able to to entertain, even though you're not playing. No, absolutely. Like trying to figure out energy levels on the bus. Um, you go on you see who really did something that day if it's 11 30 and you're still like really talkative on the bus it's like hmm. what did you do today yeah. <laughs> you know, like i'm yep. i'm gassed right now yes. like i worked my butt off yep. literally figuratively shaking it <laughs> oh man well dude this was uh this was a great conversation i feel like i could pick your brain and talk for for hours yeah we dude. could talk about yeah, all day. i know dude this was uh oh my phone might be going off my watch just started vibrating um but yeah dude this was this was great if you need any suggestions in baton rouge if you guys do get some downtime yeah. let me know um would love to catch up with you again but i'm gonna be following for sure if there's anything else you want to tell any funny stories anything that uh anything what's been the most memorable story like if, if a family member was like or somebody was like Ooh, time maybe not a family like member, one mem the most memorable as a baseball player last week playing in houston was yeah that's got really be. cool yeah um we went to Arizona. Dustin Pedroia signed my Dustin Pedroia glove what? right on the DP15. What? That's pimp. That was really cool. That is cool. Um, I've had so a lot of lot of ball players come in that I've really respected. Um, Johnny Bench came to a game Damn, one of my first awesome. years. He coached first base for Damn, us. Yeah, that's awesome. It's got to be pretty surreal, just like having them respecting <laughs> what you guys are doing and appreciating yeah. being fans of you guys when you're like, wait, 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 you're fans of us? Like, what? like that's got to be really cool. We huh? had a yeah, it's. In no world should we be as cool with some of these people as, <laughs> as we are and seeing them come through. So we had met Jose Trevino last fall um, with a family that they had come, their son JJ had come to our yeah. games and we had made a really close connection with that family. Jose invites us to his hometown baseball camp. So he invites like our coaches, a couple of us has us down. Damn, that's awesome. We hit batting practice off an aircraft carrier. What? Yeah. USS Lexington, if oh I'm correct. Oh, my God, correct. yeah, that's sick. Um, BP off an air, aircraft carrier, hang out with him. He has a celebrity softball game the next day. We open up in Tampa. The Yankees are in Tampa. Yeah, sorry, so, you know, the, we yeah. see we see Trevino, you know, whatever. I'm walking from our hotel to a Target. Like, incog. Once I leave the field, yeah. I'm hoodie yeah. up. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, walking to a Target, and he DMs me on Instagram, and he's like, Bro, are you walking to Target right now? <laughs> no way. And I didn't see it because I, like, yeah. I don't have my notifications yeah, for like, Instagram stuff on. Yeah. I didn't see it until I got to Target. And I was like, why is the Yankees starting catcher <laughs> DMing me? Catcher. Knowing yeah. who I am on the side of the road yeah, at like 7.30 at night. That I'm like, is what wild. is this life? So I ended up seeing him and like we chatted it up the next day, spent some time talking together. And I was, like, so awesome. I was like, you don't know how cool it is for me personally that you even recognize me outside <laughs> of work, but that we're friends. Yeah. Because I was like, I would consider you know Jose a, a yeah. friend at this point. It's like that we're even friends. He's like the nicest dude ever. Too. So like cool. The nicest dude, guy. I played. I got. I played with him in the Rangers organization before he got with the Yankees. Like nicest dude ever. He set us up whenever we came to Corpus Christi. He took care of us. He took care of all those people there. That's so great. He's putting on a, a huge and great event for his hometown, taking care of the kids in his hometown. Good for him. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of stuff where, like, I first met him, and, you know, I'm 29 years old. Seeing him with that community outreach and the ability to give back, the want to give back, the ability to do it day after day. And yeah. he would go to an event and then he would go get his workout in. And it yeah. was like a whole different schedule. It's yeah. like, oh, I gotta be up at 5.30. I gotta go get my workout right. in. This is going to be like, the baseball version of him. Like, yeah. You're a good guy. Yeah. And then I see him again in Tampa and not only has he like remembered me and like all this stuff, we've grown closer. Yeah, yeah. So he's like the most down to earth human being. That's awesome. Wearing the most, historic uniform in baseball exactly being an all-star catcher that's, for that with that rotation right too, I, like. I got kind of fangirled a question when i was with him <laughs> i was like i was like how do you how do you figure out how to be yourself in like such a yeah. such a tough environment to yeah. do that yeah and he just kind of talked about everything that we talked about right like, that's awesome 
you got to trust your process. You got to enjoy that, you know, you get to do this at the end of the day. Yeah. Like it's, it's just you yep. getting to do this. Yep. You have different teammates and you build special relationships, but you have to live with yourself. You have to live with your work ethic, your yep. results. So you might as well enjoy how you put in your work and the way you go about it. I wore, we had a practice at a junior college field. We got into town Tuesday. We practiced there and then the high school right by LSU the last okay. two days. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I was wearing like these Kith sweatpants because I didn't have anything clean yeah. and I had them like rolled up. Yeah. I didn't have a shirt on. Like I had my cleats <laughs> tied, like this crazy hair. Yeah. And I have these blue, they look like motorcycle glasses. <laughs> They're perfect. They look like the avatar eyes. Oh my God. But I'm out there and like, this is not traditional baseball at all. But yeah. I got better. Like I had a good workout. Still do I got better. Yeah, exactly. And you watch you know, OBJ work out or you watch like any of these guys that have any bit of swag. They're not wearing like, plain black clothing yeah. <laughs> and you know nike socks right to here and the team shoes like they're putting their own style and everything yeah. so why would i go out there and work out in some boring stuff that's uh, not going to make me want to go work out yeah if i go to the gym and i'm wearing some ratty work fit or if i go to lululemon and cop a brand new outfit i'm gonna want to go to the gym like, it's, the, it's that simple yeah. stuff where if i enjoy the look good feel good play good like, i love I'm gonna it. get up and get it done yeah and sometimes when you're on the road for 10 days in a row or 24 days in a row, you're grinding like that. You need that shit. I, that's why I got my hair <laughs> you done. Literally like, it's need, okay, yeah. I'm on the road. Yeah. I'm a little bored. I need yeah, to spice it up. I need something. Like, I need something to, do? yeah, exactly. Okay. Now you get to go show it off, connect with some fans, get some energy. I, I got on campus. I was like, all right, what am I going to do today? How am I going to spend money? Like, okay, let's go to, let's go to the LSU store. Like, yeah. Let's get some LSU gear because yeah. I will have that LSU crew neck for yeah. the rest of my life. I love it. And the other thing is beating people to the punch too. Like. True. I was one of the first people in that store. So then you come back, oh, where'd yeah. you get that? Where, you where's go. the gear at? Yep. Like, okay, cool. Trend set it. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah. It, you got like the shoes, you got the shirt. It, it doesn't matter if you're the first one to wear it or, you know, you're the last one to wear it. It's how you wear it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, walk in the room, you own it. Cool. Yep. Where'd you get that? Yep. Could be a thrift shop. Yeah. Could have had it for three matter, years. It's all about how you wear it. Could be yeah, the first like time I said. wear it. Yeah. It's like, oh, you noticed it today? Yeah. You know, I have a pair of Jordan 4s. I worked at Dick Sporting Goods for two or three years in that indie ball off season yeah. to like bananas transition. Yeah. And a pair of Jordan force came in and I got them like kind of right off the truck. Like as soon as they were, <laughs> they're cleared into inventory yeah. and like they weren't a release date one. So everything was clear. I was yeah. like, okay, cool. I got my pair. I've had them for three or four years. They're dirty. They're scuffed. I had somebody compliment, compliment me last night. Oh, cool. Jordan's like, I literally, I have, I have a pair of off white, mm -hmm. um, you the UNC off white ones. People are like, you wear them? I'm like, look how fucking dirty they are. I wear them every day. I love them. It's, wear your sneakers. I've, worn, I've wanted these shoes my whole life. I've had them for four years now, and I wear the fuck out of them. Like, that's what I want to do. I wear my sneakers. Like, I, I enjoy it. I worked hard for these shoes. I'm able to afford it. You know, like, that's, yeah. Like, I'm going to wear them. People look at me like I'm crazy. They're like, but you know, I'm like, they weren't worth what they are now when I got them. And I love it, wearing them. It doesn't matter the doesn't price. Matter. Like, yeah, I'm like, it's honestly, it makes me happy when I put them on my feet and like, and it means something to me. And when I was, it's like my story. Like when I was a kid, my parents never bought me a pair of Jordans. They just never let me. They, I don't know. It was like a thing. We didn't have a ton of money growing up. And then when they did. I grew up in Jersey and AI was doing this thing and I fucking oh, chose I threes over oh, Jordans. I would, <laughs> yeah. At that point I would have too. Yeah, I so too. I, I didn't even have Jordans growing up. So like I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna buy when I was done with ball, I bought my my UNC one off whites. I'm like, I've always wanted these shoes. I'm getting them now. Um, and I wear the shit out of them. So absolutely you have I get to. it. Yeah. You're here to you're here to enjoy the human experience. Yep. It's crazy that that's my favorite part about the bananas. Like you see every spectrum of the human experience. Yeah. And you get to just enjoy it. Yep. You get to learn something new every night. You get to meet new people. You get to see something new. Jesse always says to, to us, like the players, do something you've never done on a baseball field before. I love it. Okay, yeah. sure. I don't know what that's yep. going to be. I'm going to find out tonight. Yeah. yeah, it might be failing. <laughs> I might I might fail in a new way yeah, that you've yeah. never seen before. Yeah. But it, it's funny. Like um, our center fielder hits backflip catches all the time. In that Cooperstown game that we talked about earlier, hits a, rips a backflip, misses it. The very next ball is hit to him with a runner on bases, like the seventh inning, rips the backflip again. Catches. Nails it. Let's go. It's like, that's it? Yeah. That is literally it. Okay, failed. So what? Let's do it again. How many times did you fail doing the behind the back and between the legs? Or does that come pretty natural for you and you uh, pretty much nut it every time? I would say my trick play percentage is pretty high. The behind the back one, I hit the one and only time I did it last year. Yeah. This year, I messed it up once. Okay. But that... It just kind of came about, and I was doing a pregame show with fans in Iowa, and they were just talking about trick plays or whatever, yeah. and I was kind of just 
talking out of my butt, hyping myself up. I was like, I got a new one. And a 12 year old kid, he's like, I'm not asking, I'm daring you. You have to do that tonight. Oh, wow. It's like, all right, bet. <laughs> like, I said, if, if I yeah. fail, like, you can't laugh at me, but I'll, I'll sure oh, try my oh, hardest. Yeah. And I got a ground ball in the first inning, I think, of that game. And did it. it might have been my only ground ball in that game. <laughs> and, I, and I hit it. That's awesome. And then it went viral. I was like, Double Let's win. go. Yeah, double, win. double win. Not only did you do it, and the kid thought you were cool. Exactly. Like, now the world ev- knows. Too. Everybody. Yeah, exactly. Somebody commented, I was like, Larry Bird's playing for Savannah Bananas. I was like, I made it. Made it. Made it. Made it. Me and go. Larry Bird, let's yes. go. That's sick, man. Um, well, I cannot wait to get out there Saturday night and see y'all. Um, and again, you have my number. You have Abby's, Abby's number. Um, at, hit us up for anything. Um, happy yeah. that y'all are here. Take Thankful for what wrecks. you guys are doing. Yeah. What you say? I'm gonna take some of those Louisiana wrecks. Yeah, let's go. We had some good food down here. Yeah, so I bet. We come out Saturday. We're yeah. gonna have to, let's to go. hang out for sure. Yep. I got some good spots now living down here for 17 years. So <laughs> yeah, you're native now. Yeah, I guess. That's what my mom says, at least. So I don't know. At least I don't have a southern accent yet. But I, she thinks I do. I've adopted one. Yeah. I, I say think, y'all now, so. Yeah, I'm from Pittsburgh. So Yens was Wow, yeah, yeah exactly. Right? Yeah. If I say that People right. are like, "What?" Yeah. So I'll just adapt it. Yeah. yeah. One of my one of my best friends, uh, now wives is from there, and he's got she has a podcast all about Steelers stuff, and it's called like Yin's Her. Like, mm-hmm. and I That's was like, perfect. I didn't even know what it was at first, and she had to explain. I'm like, gotcha. Like, yeah, I didn't even know from the Northeast too. Like, yeah. what it meant. What Yin's it was, Her yeah. is a great name. Yeah. For that. Oh, she That's kills it. Very. She well, kills Pittsburgh it. Brand. Yeah. And her and like another good looking blonde, like they they have a pod, they they kill it and they kill it on Twitter, banter with everybody. It's awesome. Yeah. So. That's pretty sweet. Yep. Ryan, dude, I'm gonna let you get out of here. Get rolling for your uh, for your day. Get over to Alex Box um, and enjoy uh, enjoy tonight. No kilts tonight. What are you guys just normal uniforms tonight? I think all yellows tonight. All we wore, yellows. We wore okay. pinstripes last night. Nice. All whites. We have a set of all whites with like blue pennies down the side. Nice. Yeah. They're my favorite, but they're very traditional, so we don't wear them that much. I got right? you. They're yeah. too traditional yeah, baseball. Exactly. Really, like, no, you guys look too much like a baseball team. All right yellows, um, pinstripes. We have a tequila sunrise ish jersey. Ooh, that's, that's cool. Pretty cool. We have a alternate green one, and then the kilts. Nice. Kilts are all kinds of noises right now. <laughs> kilts would be fun. Kilts are. I'm kilts are hard to do trick plays. Are they? Oh yeah. damn! All right. Well, hopefully. I mean, I'm still gonna rip it. All right, good. Yeah, that's a fear of failure, baby. Let's go. You gotta yeah. figure it out. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, you're gonna wear the kilts again, so I'll figure out a different way to like get it done. Exactly, it might not be yeah. like the usual. Exactly. Yeah. This the behind the back might work better than between. There the There we go. I'm kilts. looking forward to it. Lila, what are you doing? What's going on? She's done. She's she's tapping out. She's she like slept for like an hour. Yeah, and she a half. did. She's yeah. chilling. Yeah, she just she got that look on her face. Got that dog in her. Yeah. Well, thank you, dude. I appreciate it again. Thanks for having me. Man. Yeah, absolutely.